one other option is to have you know like like a, a fixed shop like a like a a veg market in a physical shop where you open daily you know like a fruit veg stool like proper shop that is interesting because you can keep uh you can be open for more hours forget about sustainability you want to enrich ecosystems every bean is equipped to live a positive energetic balance keep it pruned we are cultivating abundance not a problem to cut down trees the problem is not planting them hey what's up agroforest academy crew welcome back to another video today's video we're going to talk about you know uh how to commercialize your fruit and veg you know uh specific to small medium scale kind of homestead family run business you know how you can get that veg to your final end customer different ways okay uh so but just before we go into that you know if you haven't subscribed to the channel we know some of you guys are here regular always watching the videos but you haven't clicked the subscribe button that's a simple way you can support the channel and help the algorithms you know so we can bring you know keep us bringing you new content and reaching more people all right other than that uh, other ways to support us is through the patreon account if you subscribe there you get some extra content and uh it's ways you can keep on you know supporting us further so without further ado let's get right into it so today's topic is not exactly like uh you know rights and wrongs we're just going to be discussing some of some of our experiences some of the processes we've had to understanding uh ways of you know selling this veg and getting that to to the final end product uh, this could vary in different uh, regions and and different conditions all right uh, different kind of support movements and that so but you know this process that we've been through i see a lot of other people going through as well so um let's talk about first of all you know a market you know like a stool you know so you produce your fruit and veg and now you know maybe you've got a stool in the market okay or maybe you, you're thinking of setting up a stool in the market um one way of doing that you know is getting a, a, a few a few producers together you know uh, maybe you and your neighbors some people locally you can get together and you can put a stool up together because you know once you team up with people you're able to get more variety right uh and you know we see you know we see i'm pretty stubborn i like you know i like i like taking our produce you know mine and and our neighbors and and you know agroforestry produce that i really trust you know and i'm really stubborn I'm like no i'm only taking products uh that have principles to our stools and things like that uh, we have quite a good following uh because of that but you know if we don't open up for external things we end up paying the price you know things like you know honey from a little bit further away you know mushrooms from another producer a little bit further away you know another kind of like a, uh farinhas which is like um, cassava powder and other like corn powders and things like that if we don't stop you know jellies and things if you don't you know bring um you know if you don't go a little bit further than than just that veg that you produce and you and your neighbors produce you end up paying the price because people go somewhere else you know people really like to to go somewhere and do their weekly shopping there okay so in, in this sense you know if you open up maybe it's got a little bit of a longer footprint we understand it's a little bit it's another operation where now you're not only having to produce the veg and blah 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 you're also having to manage stock for other stuff but this really goes a long way in building that uh that community in your stool you know people can you know they're sure they can go there and then you know you can usually get a good markup price you know you put 40 50 percent on top of uh you know these honeys and these other uh products but it's really quite key that right you know if, like i paid the price several times so i'm really stubborn i'm like no we're really selling the stuff that we produce that we you know obviously you know these other products that you bring in they all have to be all aligned with the quality organic and you know things like that so there, there isn't a problem bringing that in uh it's just you have to really now uh take more on board you know administrate that side of the business as well but that really pays off that really helps 
your stool, you know, to stand out. And, you know, where people can come to your stool, you know, maybe they, they go there because they need the honey and now they're buying the veg. All right, so that's quite key. Uh, one thing that does happen in, in veg stools, you know, market stools, is, uh, you know, there tends to be quite a bit of leftovers in the end because you really got to have that balance where, you know, the people which have arrived there, you know, in the second half of the, of, of you know, so say you're open from, from 7 till 12, okay? So when it comes 10 o'clock in the morning, you know, you know, if you're not there at 8 o'clock, you know, maybe some of the best products have gone, maybe some of that, the, those those fruits that came in smaller quantities they've all been sold so you know it's people that arrive later you know they pay the price for that you know so everyone you know you got all the the aunties coming in at like they're there seven o'clock waiting for you to set up and you you're setting everything up and people are there waiting and you're like hold on hold on we'll just please one minute and you're setting everything up and, and th those people really have the benefit of choosing the freshest you know uh the prettiest and you know and they have a, a wider selection so, but you got to find a balance, uh, you know, to reach that 12 o'clock, to reach that midday hour with a nice variety as well. So, you know, people are still, still able, people that are only able to arrive at, say, 11 a.m., they still have variety and they can still be, be, be doing a nice shopping. And that's what happens. You end up uh, having quite a lot of loss, you know. It is quite inevitable, you know, with, with your, when you have a market stool, you know. You can go ahead and have the strategy where it's finished, it's finished. But, you know, you get that, you get the end where you, you, those customers, they're not really going to be coming back. Those people that, you know, they're really able to arrive later. So that loss represents uh, a big loss for, for the producer, which is, you know, for the agriculture people, which are there literally producing. Uh, we see as much as 30%, you know, and, and then things can happen. You know, it can rain on the day. Uh, you know, it can be like a, a bank holiday and everyone's traveled and, you know, your city. Because some cities, you know, bank holiday, they fill up, you know, with tourism. Some cities, they, you know, go ghost town because everyone goes traveling somewhere else, which is our case here. So, you know, we get all these different uh, situations where, you know, you're, they're left with 30% loss on the day, 30% leftovers. And uh, sure, there's a lot of strategies, you know. I'll, I'll go as far as, you know, taking this veg and, you know, on, on my route home, as, you know, you stop off in some strategic points where you can, you know, make this veg turnover. Uh, you can either donate this, you know, to to, to people, obviously, like, uh, you know, all the people that work in your farm, you come back with the leftovers and you distribute that. And that's that's basically what we're eating. You know, like the leftovers is what goes to my fridge, is what goes to the fridge of the people that work here. You know, it's all quality veg and, you know, this is what we're making the most of. We've got to make the most of this. Um, but I go to as far as like, you know, the guy who hoofs uh, my my horses, you know, that's an expense, you know. He's coming in to hoof the horses. That, that's about, you know, easily $150 a month, let's say, or every 40 days. And what I can do is, you know, it's en route, I pass by his house. You know and and drop off you know like a nice market's worth of veg every saturday let's say and you know i get a good discount on the hoofing or even i get the hoofing for free so i'm like don't worry you know your family's looked after i'm gonna stock you up and then you know look after me with you know with the horse hoof in there you see what i'm saying so that's an example there you've got to make the most of things you know try and make the most of that leftover but it's, it's usually quite a lot of interesting stuff you can offer so that's just an example, a bit of the processes that we're having to, you know, make up as we go to make the most of, of our leftovers. This leftovers, it is very expensive. You know, I find that 30% uh, of the cost of that vegetable there is the harvesting, you know, the washing, the preparing, the vegetable, uh, the packaging and the labeling. So that process there, you know, you've, you've done all the processes where you manured it, you've produced it, it's beautiful, irrigated, everything. But once it's ready on the field, that process of harvesting, preparing it, washing it, blah, packaging, labeling, that goes as high as 30% of the whole cost of that vegetable, right? So 
that's quite expensive that's a very significant uh, figure there so what does that mean what does that translate to if you don't sell that product you know it's cost you this much more to get that ready there looking beautiful in the market stall so it's not like you know uh, a rocket is going to waste it's a rocket plus all the packaging cost that harvesting that washing that labeling you know all of that cost and now it's there looking beautiful ready to go and if that goes to waste you know you take a, a loss and you know we hope for that not to be your profit your profit goes to waste because that takes up occasionally uh, the profit that you had so it's a process it's quite a tricky process I'll be honest with you okay uh, it's quite a fine line you've got to have some great sales you need to sell a lot of volume to account for the loss at the end of the market and the occasional like I said rain or bank holiday or other things that can happen that really dent your sales on that day so you know it's a really tricky process stools uh, usually you know it can be more pros prosperous it can be more profitable for those family-run business because then you know that that harvesting cost and that packaging cost you know with, with the labor of washing that produce and that if that's all a family-based product then that's when you can really get into like a you know a profit you know up the margin okay not that you can't make profit otherwise but you know that's when you can really up the margin you know with that family base where you know maybe your son you know is a teenager and, and your daughters and everyone's helping out in that process and your wife and your husband and your auntie and the, and the grandchildren if, if it's like a family run business where everyone's like getting together and doing it together then you know that money's coming into the family and it's enough you know for a simple life you know we can tick things over and you can live a nice happy you know sustainable life and you know you can really be uh, fulfilled by all this and you know really live a nice happy life this way a simple uh, nice and healthy family life this way um, all right so once you know if the family's getting involved and you're not necessarily having to pay you know transport and you know uh, other fees and taxes you know for having labor you know that it all adds up you know um, so that's a process there and that's something to look out for for your waste and you know I spoke about one or two processes that what you can do with this waste you know and you know now we've got the chickens and things like that so all of this can go towards animal feed and help you know help us get a step closer into you know organic eggs and things like that you know more percentage of the animal feed can be from proper organic fruit and veg so that that's positive you make that count as well so what are the other options you know for small time uh, medium veg producer and then we obviously go in there's the CSA which is very very interesting very very positive you know it's a whole topic the CSA if you want to look into it check it out uh, basically you know people are they pay in advance you know communities uh, you know the, the producers approach uh, their friends and families and you know the, their direct contact contact and they say you know it costs me so much to produce I need so much profit if you guys pay me this I'll get this money and I'll produce and I'll deliver you the food so the CSA is a very intelligent system that is very positive you've been paid for and they're like co-producers these people they're with you they're they're investing in in they're investing in you they're investing in harvesting quality crops and they're investing in this so I mean the positive thing about this as well is you know if the hurricane comes over and you've lost a crop they've all taken a hit with you they're like coal producers they're like they're partners in the, in the business so they're in it you know in the high times in the low times and they appreciate that their money is going in towards you know uh, ordinary processes that you know produce food and, and you know and things can go well or can go wrong but you know I mean you, you tend to have positive results you know once you invest in, in in quality processes and then you know they tend to all of a sudden they're like wow this thing really works and now I'm receiving all this veg for my money that's great I love it and you know and these people they can go to your the site and they can support you in different ways with the marketing you know so 
There's some really interesting ways there through the CSA. And now, uh, already before I was working, but you know, with the whole coronavirus thing, what's really gone crazy off the roof, which is a very interesting process, you know, is selling, you know, online your your basket, you know, like your, your veg basket. Um, selling the veg basket is really interesting uh, because this is the deal. You only harvest what you've already sold okay so if someone's pre-ordered this much vegetable you know there's ways you can go like with a proper fancy website but you can do it in whatsapp groups and as simple as that um you know you've offered like you know on a wednesday or on a, on a monday maybe you put out the offer okay on the wednesday night you close the offers people who have ordered they've ordered on the Thursday, you're harvesting and preparing that, you know, and maybe on a Friday morning, you're delivering this. So, you know, that's like, uh, you know, those days they can alter, obviously. But it's like you've put out the offer, people have ordered it, and then you've harvested it for them, for that, you know. So you're only harvesting to demand. So the point is, say, like, you know, if you've got leftover, if you've got leftover rocket, at least you haven't harvested and packaged that for leftovers if it's a leftover harvest in the field that's not as bad as actually harvesting that preparing that packaging that labeling that you know got all the plastic involved and then you're not selling it okay so that's that, that's the next process where then maybe that rocket you know can just chop and drop or you can just cut it and feed it to the animals as it is you know you just cover the soil or whatever other process you want to go through but you've, you've saved on 30% of that cost that you would have had to package in. You're only packaging what's already sold. So this is really key. And then you start making, you know, then you start upping the margin because, you know, where's your profit? Your profit sometimes is in your loss and you've lost it there because you've lost it. So if, you, if you're able to cut your loss, then now that's when you're seeing your profit. Okay. So preparing... Uh, baskets veg baskets you know when we say baskets but you know it could be in bags or it can be in like returnable bags and boxes or whatever but you know basket you know seen like a, uh, you know preparing basket you know with the varieties of veg that is being the most efficient way you know for small time medium time vegetable producer to harvest the crops to things that are already sold okay this has been really interesting a lot of people have been having you know they've been finding it this is the tendency uh, to avoid waste. And then all those people in your, heart, in, in your market stalls, you know, you just get them on board. You start getting the telephone numbers. And even when you've got the market, it's really good to get people's telephone number where you can like, you can expose to them the products you're gonna have this week. And maybe, you know, we arrive there and that's a pickup point. So you've got the stall, but already so much of your produce has already been reserved and sold. And, you know, and then you can harvest more, you know, accordingly, you can thin, thin that out, adjust that fine, fine adjustment there. So with the online business or the WhatsApp thing, you know, less waste, really interesting there. What is the tricky thing about that? Uh, say in a stool, in a, in a vegetable stool, say you have like two or three, you know, sour sops, or you have, you know, a few little fancy fruits. You've only got three or four different portions, you know, and in, in a stool you can go and you can put it there and that's going to be sold, the three or four portions. It's really difficult for me to say on a Monday guarantee that I'm going to have a certain amount of portions of this fruit and then I've got to offer that. So I can only offer, uh, I can only pre-offer what I can guarantee I'm going to sell on that Saturday I'm going to be able to harvest. So those little things that, you know, they get a little bit lost on the way. Uh, sometimes, so people get around this where they, they, they have the option to buy in, uh, picking your, your products in your, in your basket, online basket. Or you have the option of buying a pre set up basket you say okay i'll pay a little bit cheaper and i guarantee i'm gonna have uh you know three lettuce four you know varied veg you know one or two roots you know and and two different types variety of fruit and then you can mix and match so you say i've got four sour sops i give these people four sour sops and then i give these people you know five uh berries uh, five berries i'll give to someone else and then you, you know you fill in the gaps uh with fruit throughout your demand you know you've got to get two fruit to each of these baskets baskets basically so 
and then you can really like you don't have to guarantee them this but you have to somehow you know some of them will get lime some of them will get you know and then you know when you got those ready-made baskets you know you put your ginger but you can't give people ginger every week because how much ginger can you consume so there's things going on there okay one other option is to have you know like like a, a fixed shop like a like a a veg market in a physical shop where you open daily you know like a fruit veg stool like proper shop that is interesting because you can keep uh you can be open for more hours say because usually you go to a, a, a stool market you open either in the morning or in the evening and often we've been doing a lot of afternoon evening veg markets where people coming out of work you know from like four till eight it's not only the early morning saturday morning things anymore we can do it like on a tuesday and we find it on a tuesday on the midweek we're doing stools you know setting up stools in the city evening you know four till eight people coming home and buying their veg you know so that works as well but you know when you've got a physical shop maybe open now for 12 hours a day from nine till nine or from seven till ten even all right so you open you know 12 15 hours a day that gives you more more time to sell that veg and what's more interesting of this is that some of this veg is okay to be sold tomorrow so it's not a waste once you go like that veg that's still only on a saturday that's it there's nothing you can do with that you know, there's a few little things you can do with it but you know you've got to be creative with your loss because it's it's a loss uh, maybe your lettuce won't be good to sell the next day but you know a lot of your broccoli your aubergine that is good to go for one more day let's say uh, still looking nice and pretty in, in in the shop you know uh, i got my humidifiers and i'm keeping everything fresh in the shop so the interesting thing about the shop is that you can often get another day you get more hours in one day to sell and then you can often get another day on that product as well so often you can get like 25 hours of exposure you know altogether for a lot of your products so you really cut down on the loss on the waste okay a lot of maths to be done then you've got to have staff in the shop uh, all the taxes and everything and then you got to pay rent for that shop but I have been finding that this is an interesting opportunity uh, you know if you've got enough people together because now you're gonna sell a lot of veg uh, if you if you can the bulk of it you can produce and then you can you know you've got your partners your neighbors to get together and set up a shop with you like they would in a stool but it's really interesting in the sense that you can be open for more hours you can you can expose that product for more hours you know and uh, and then you can start getting little things that's not just fruit and veg you know and not only just the honeys and and uh, the mushrooms you can start getting things you know more dairies because you've got the fridge you get the dairy selection and then you can get all those fancy things like you know the sustainable toothbrush and sustainable washing powder liquid you know and then you get the sustainable dishwasher liquid and you know all those sustainable you know then you start getting all your rices organic rice and organic you know packaged things already you know what i'm saying so with, that's really interesting because people can then it, then in that in this case it's key for you to get you know a wider variety because you know you really want people to go there and do the most of the shopping there we we you know we find people buying most of the things in these sustainable markets now it's it's, it's a real big boom you know big companies are investing in chains of these little sustainable markets and you'd be surprised how many like organic uh, sustainable like chemical products you know are, are being sold in these and then you got like organic butcher you know so you've got like uh, your sustainable meat and your sustainable you know different and then you really can expand on the um, variety of product you can offer to your customer because you know with 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 the with the veg with the fruit and veg you know and the bakery stuff that's the kind of you know the, the stuff that really that goes off within a day or two that's what customers are going to the shop every day for i need to go to the shop every day for bread different cultures when i lived in the uk we didn't uh we had a lot of frozen bread and we we uh we put it in, in the oven and, and kind of baked that at home but you know here where i live 
it's the kind of culture where you go and you get your fresh bread daily so you go to a bakery shop every day you know just to get that bread and then you maybe pick something else up uh, and with with the veg shop as well open every day it's the kind of thing that you know you might pop in the morning and get some bananas and some fruit but you might be on your way back from work and you're like oh you know what I need to pick something else up you know I'm gonna get uh, you know I forgot to get some of this fruit or I gotta get fresh veg for tomorrow some fresh tomatoes or you go every other day to keep your your, your veg fresh so with these fresh products it's the kind of things that people go in more than once a week sometimes they go in daily if you've got like a bakery thing going on they might go in the morning to get the bread and they might go in the evening back to get some bananas for the kids you know so it's the kind of thing that people go in and out now with those packaged stuff you know like packaged rice and uh you know washing up liquid and toothpaste and toothbrush uh, you know other other little uh sustainable products they like they're like they're going to the supermarket for that and they might go in monthly or even just weekly but if these guys can come into your veg store you know and they can there they can buy your bread there and then they can buy the washing up liquid then maybe you can you know really up your ticket on that you know uh you know your medium ticket value on that and uh maybe can they, they can do the weekly shopping there maybe they don't need to go to the supermarket because a lot of the time they're like you know what i need to go to the supermarket and they're there and they'll pick up that tomato there because they're there already so if you give them the option where they can come here now and get some of these you know uh condiments and things that you know it's not typical of a of a vegetable stool but you know it's all things that aligned with your principles with like sustainable products then people can come there and now they can actually do their weekly shopping there that's really positive and then you can you can have a nice markup on those products all right and then you know you know you give them an offer you always give them you always need to have something on offer maybe those products that people come in daily for that's what people compare prices now just a little you know just a little bit marketing tip people know the price of the banana people know the price of the tomato but you know if they, if they go there because you've got a good price on the tomato but maybe you know on your broccoli you can put a little bit a better margin on that or when you're washing up liquid you can have a better margin on that you know you can really be like you know tomato we've got a good price on our tomato today and people will be attracted by some of these core products you know banana tomatoes you know onion garlic you know this will vary with different region but you've got those core products people really get attracted to by the price and obviously the quality it's aligned people with the principles and obviously it's got to be all fair price i'm not saying but I'm saying, you know, if you've got like a, a promotion for one of these key products, people will come. And once they're there, they will buy a bit of this. They'll pick up that rice. They'll pick up it. And then they'll start, you know, coming more regular to your to your fruit and veg shop with if you can sell, you know, more variety. Uh, this is the process we're about to open our uh, shop. You know, Situ the Jazz here. We're going to open our shop next Friday. And we're really excited about this and so i'm just talking about some of these processes and how we had a lot of stools in the city we had our delivery system and now we're thinking of this process of actually a physical shop and how this can uh, really you know optimize the loss and you know and expand on you know people coming in and actually doing the whole shopping with us all right so a little bit long there but you know just ideas different regions that might vary i'm not saying it's all right or wrong you know you can like and you can dislike okay but these are our processes and it's interesting sharing them with you because you might be going through the same process you might be going them in the future you might be living them now all right so just more ideas you know comment about it here let's talk about it discuss it if, if you've got more questions maybe we can do a video more videos on these kind of topics all right uh don't forget you know we, you know we're trying to get a, a 2.0 of our online course together we're going to need support in the patreon we're trying to get the funds so we can actually get you know good quality content out there for you so there is a reason why you support us on patreon to keep us bringing you videos and better content all right and in turn we're giving you extra little content there as well uh, extra complimentary content on each of our videos uh so a okay man and, you know other webinars a lot of things going on cool interaction in the patreon group as well all right so if you don't know it's all we've got a tier there for as little as 7.90 a month where you supporting the tribe don't forget to subscribe to the channel don't forget to share this content with your friends 
uh, if you know someone that might you know be part of be living this process that we've talked about today and you know might be interesting for them as well all right so from the agroforest academy crew thanks very much for watching till next time this one's you thanks very much baby